Mondo gives collectors a cause for jubilation. Here's your look at the brand new Mondo, the X-Men, the animated series, Jubilee. we entered the world of Marvel's X-Men, the animated series, with Jubilee hand in explosive hand. Now the newest member of the X-Men is also the third in their line of the X-Men animated series 1-6 scale figures. With her signature yellow trench and pink armor, Wolverine's Maul Babe sidekick is ready to unlock her plasma powers. This limited edition is also prepared for boarding with extra gear and portraits, including her look from Jubilee's fairy tale theater. Nothing like Sentinels to be ruining a Saturday afternoon shopping spree. Before we get a closer look at the brand new X-Men the Animated Series Jubilation Lee, let me go ahead first and thank the folks over at Mondo that did provide the sample we could have a look at. If, though, interested, you'd like to get your hands on Jubilee for yourself, she's currently on pre-order over on their website for $205. I'll provide the link down below in the video description. In the meantime, though, let's grab the tape measure just to see how tall Jubilee stands. First in inches, the figure is, I would say, about 9 inches exactly. Get a load of that. Flip that around, though, then you're looking at the figure being about 23 centimeters tall. And speaking of sidekicks to Wolverine, let's slide over Jubilee here for a second and bring in the earlier looked at Wolverine. If I can actually get her just to stand here for a second. She does also come in with a display stand. Normally, I wouldn't have any problems to get her to stand. Here's, though, what she looks like along with Wolverine. And I think they're scaled pretty well with one another. In the cartoon, of course, Jubilee being a young girl would be a lot smaller than Wolverine. And in this case as well, she only goes to about the shoulder of Logan. I did already allude to the fact that Jubilee came in with a display stand, and the proof is in the pudding. To the far left of the figure, you'll notice the black circular display stand with an adjustable neck already attached to it. In fact, that's the only little bit of assembly that's required when you get this first out of the box. You just have to take the display stand neck and fit it in the provided slot here on the top of the display stand. Fit the two in place. One thing that is different, though, about the display stands, based on the ones we've looked at before is that earlier ones have had like the M-shaped stand. I actually prefer the circular stand myself. I feel it gives you a much more larger footprint to work with when it comes to the figure. And it also doesn't feel like it teeters as much sometimes because of course the other one being an M also did have sort of the scroll work underneath the base. I myself prefer the circular base instead. Now, one thing I did notice though about mine and it probably would be the case with all of them as well, is that because there's an adjustable clip that goes on along the top that will clip around the figure's waist, it does rattle a bit, obviously, when you're putting it on the figure. Now, again, I don't think necessarily you would necessarily need a display stand. I mean, yeah, the display stand serves fine to kind of give a nice finished look, I feel, to the figure. But I don't think it necessarily needs to have a clip w around her waist. Obviously, in, or in order to accommodate that as well, you're going to have to lift up the trench coat and get the waist clip around that. One thing I would worry about doing that also is the fact that it probably would end up scraping some of the paint around her waist. So while there is a display stand included, what I might just end up doing, just put the figure down here again for one second. What I might end up just doing is removing this top piece altogether. And if anything, then I've got my sort of, sort of a stabilizing like strut behind her in which you can actually have the figure standing behind it, or I guess in this case, standing in front of it. So there, there is that option available. Again, you can go the, the, route, the route of attaching this around the figure's waist. And even though there is technically these rubberized feet that they put on the end of the clip, I still feel like there's a potential for that scraping off the paint on the figure. Now, Mondo is going to be releasing two variations of Jubilee. One, the standard version, which is basically going to have all the accessories I've kind of grouped together here on the right side. But though to the left side and closest to the figure, she also gets a limited edition exclusive release, which is basically all the same accessories, but she's also going to get two extra additional heads. She's going to come include with a skateboard, and she's going to come include with knee pads for that skateboard. Again, that one is going to be the limited edition release, and that's the one that Mondo was providing for this review. Uh, she does come, like I said, with a skateboard. The skateboard is all molded here in plastic. Sad to say, unfortunately, though, that the wheels for the skateboard don't actually roll. Not that you really would ever want to put Jubilee on top of a skateboard and then roll her across your shelf, but unfortunately you wouldn't be able to anyways because the wheels are permanently molded to the board itself. It's well-colored. you got a darker blue with a stripe of lighter blue. 
as it sort of represents the cell shaded look that the cartoon characters would have in the episodes. Wolverine also had that as well. Jubilee, as you'll see in a second, also has the additional shadowing that she has on her body. So I do like the look of the skateboard. Again, it's not probably something I'm going to ever have her displayed with, maybe standing on top of, but I might maybe see myself maybe having it displayed in her hands might end up doing that. Of course, for her safety, the figure also comes included with knee pads. The knee pads are softer plastic. They're molded here in a purple rubbery plastic. You may see that there's a clip here on the back, and you may also see that there's a loop here. You connect the two together when you fit it around the figure's knees. So essentially what you're doing is you're going to take Jubilee here, and then again, just going to take the knee pads, wrap them around her knees, and then attach them from the back. If you don't attach them, they're going to sit a little loose on the figure's body. And of course, you get a pair of those for a pair of knees. The figure also to go along with that, she also comes with a head sculpt that has specifically the helmet on top of her head. I believe there was an episode or two in which she's wheeling around on the skateboard, and of course she is wearing the helmet for her protection. She's got some, again, some dark shadowing there for the side for the shading. And again, like in most of the head sculpts, pretty much all the head sculpts, she has also as well those trademark large glasses that she wears with a little bit of reflection painted there for the front. It's an okay head sculpt, probably not one that I'm ever going to see myself displaying along with the figure, considering that she already has some really good ones released along with the standard version. So put those to the side. One thing I really like that Mondo included in this case, for Jubilee, she gets the exclusive head sculpt based from the episode Fairy Tale Theater. In this, in this case, she's actually portrayed as more an elf. You can see that she has longer ears to the side and longer hair to the back. And while, again, it's not something I'm probably going to be displaying ever with Jubilee, I love the idea that Mondo had taken the time to include that with the figure. Again, all of these can be swapped out simply just by the ball joints that are on the top of the neck. So simply just yank off the existing head and pop the new head, in this case, from Fairy Tale Theater, just in its place instead. You can see as well that she's got the little stone there on the front of her headband. Again, a very pretty portrait of Jubilee. So those are all the things that come included with the limited edition release. And again, we're just going to then move our way, our attention over at least, to all the stuff that comes included with the standard figure. Again, I feel for all the things that come included with the limited edition release, the thing I was the most excited for was honestly the skateboard, and then probably this head sculpt here. On to, though, like I said, all the things that come included with the standard release. Now, Jubilee comes included with, not counting the things that we've already had a look at, two additional head sculpts. So really, if you tally everything up, the figure has five total head sculpts if you go with the limited, re limited edition release. Uh, though the figure comes included, for example, with some chili fries. Some delicious chili fries. Those, those look quite good, actually. Uh, you can see that she probably asked them to put a little bit of extra chili on the top of it. It's all molded the same, so you can't actually remove the fries, even if you wanted to. But it's a well-painted little representation of the chili fries. I think she's actually getting them at the mall at the time the Sentinels attack. To go along with that, to wash that down, she also comes included with a Slurpee. I'm not sure what flavor of Slurpee is inside of it, but you can see on the side it does say Slurpee, and it does have a little straw there on the, ta on the top. Nothing is removable on this. It's all molded as one piece. I'm going to probably display her, I think, with that as well. Then the figure also comes in clue with a series of interchangeable hands. As of right now, the figure has some closed fists in the sockets of her forearms, but we're going to be fixing that shortly. The figure has, for example, this sparkle effect finger hand, hand sculpt. And it kind of looks for a second like she's carrying around a wad of bubble gum, but she's got a little spark there on the end of the finger that will get progressively worse as we look at the additional hands. So she comes in clue with that, but she only comes with one hand that does that. She also comes included with a couple of gestured hands. One thing I do like about the gestured hands, actually, there's a couple of things I like really about the gestured hands. First of all, the way they've painted it. Again, you've got the darker shadowing there on the side of the hands, and then you've got the additional panel lining on the inside of it. Sort of just to represent where the fabric of the material would have just sort of bunched up around her hands, for example. The thing I also really like about these hands is that they seem to be using a softer plastic. These hands were probably some of the easiest hands I've ever had to change on a six scale figure, and you'll see in a second what I mean. To change the hands out, first of all, we're just going to grab onto the forearm here or the glove area, and then we're just going to yank the hand off. I mean, there was no fuss. There was no fighting. It was so easy just to simply remove the hands. Again, it seems like they're using a softer plastic, maybe not as much from the peg joint, but it definitely seems like the socket section, they seem to be doing instead a square instead of a circular hole. And maybe that's one of the reasons why changing the hands seems so easy on Jubilee here. To put the hands obviously in, you're just going to pop those back in place. And then she has some gestured hands instead of the closed fists. While we're sticking with that, the figure also comes in clue with uh, a grabbing hand. So if you wanted, for example, to have her displayed with the sippy cup, you can sip the, sit the sippy cup inside the finger grip there of Jubilee. And she could carry around that with her as well. I suppose as well, you could also use, for example, 
I haven't really tried this yet, but you probably could take one of the hands, I would imagine. And yeah, maybe it doesn't fit as well with the skateboard. You sort of would have, I guess, to take the skateboard and fit it in between her fingers. That's not really the way that somebody would naturally hold a skateboard. She, she really doesn't have a proper means to hold the skateboard if she wanted to be carrying it around with her that way instead. There is technically a peg to the top, but again, there really isn't a way to kind of hold on to that. So there really isn't a hand suitable for holding the skateboard. She's going to have to ride it, if anything else. The figure also comes included with two variations of her sparkle effect that she has in the cartoon. One is the firework blast. I guess that's probably the best way to describe it. They're sort of making use here in this case of a translucent pink plastic. And you see the way my hand is actually waving behind it. Uh, additionally added to that, you can see that they've they've colored in some really nice gold stars. The gold stars leave an end trail behind them, and it goes all the way down to her hands. The only thing I don't really like about the hands is the way they've actually attached the effect. The effect is literally just attached to the back of the hand, which when you do, when you do it, for example, let's just go ahead and remove those hands again. So super easy to remove these. When you replace them, for example, and we'll do the exact same thing on the other side here, pop those in place. When you have them, fit, say, for example, displayed this way, you would never notice the way that they're actually attached to the hands. And they actually look finished. They look clean until you turn them to the side here. And then you can kind of see the way, again, they've attached it to the back of the hands. It's not the prettiest thing to look at. But again, the way that if you, depending on, again, the way you've got the figure displayed, if you got her just displayed like this, you'd never be any bit the wiser of how that really is attached onto her hand. So if you, as long as you kind of keep it like this, the figure looks fantastic using these hands. To go one then step further, just to get her again to stand, she also comes included with these effects. Now, this is a lot more complex. Complex maybe is the best word to use for describing this. It's a lot heavier as well. That now they've taken what they, in this case, it would have just been a fanned out clear kind of translucent pink plastic. In this case, while this isn't heavy plastic, there's a good chunk of plastic being utilized here. And what they've done instead, if they painted it with really nice metallic pinks and metallic golds, there's some additional details added there of some blue effects on the end of it as well. It looks fantastic, but it does add some additional weight when it comes to the figures displaying it. Let's go ahead, for example, and just remove the hands once again. Did I already mention how easy the... I know I did. I did. I'm not going to say it again. I'm going to plug that in place. And then you're just going to want to bring the arms up. Now, it's okay, but I don't know how well that really works with the figure. I mean, it does bring a little bit of extra, certainly shelf appeal when it comes to displaying this figure. But I'm not a big fan of really having this much stuff going on. And I also honestly feel as well it's going to start to wreak havoc, especially on Jubilee's elbow joints. So I think it, when it comes to creative ways of displaying her, I'm likely going to be displaying her with this effect rather than this effect instead. Again, we're just going to pop those off for right now. Let's maybe for the sake of this, just replace out to normal, normal hands. Cause of course we're going to want to have to look at the figure as well. I'm going to pop back in the closed fist for right now, at least. And I'm sure when we get down to final looks of the figure, we're going to go back to something a little bit more interesting than that. So with those pop then back in place, let's look at the defaulted head sculpt. Now, I have changed out several of the heads since opening up the box. I would only hope that this is the defaulted head sculpt. But you have a more classic-looking Jubilee, of course, with the larger shade glasses up here, in this case, on her forehead. There is, vari there is a variation of that as well, where, like, for example, you can get this head sculpt, which is very similar when it comes to the hair, but in this case, you've actually got the glasses down. I always consider really Jubilee as having the glasses up myself. That way you get the chance as well to see all the work that they sculpt into the face in the first place. But if you prefer to have Jubilee with the glasses down, there's that option as, as well. It does look like, like just from looking at it, that the hair is exactly the same to one another. One might be just a little bit messier than the other, maybe like this one here, for example, but it's pretty close of a head sculpt. The one that I really like the most, though, and in fact, actually, there is a secondary head sculpt I forgot to bring in. We'll bring that in in a second. There's also this here, this one as well that does have, again, the glasses up on the forehead, but you have a bigger smile here on her face. The one that I did leave off, in fact, for the review, I just actually had it sitting over here, for example. My favorite by far is this one right here where she's blowing a bubble. To change the heads out, by the way, maybe not as easy as the hands because you have to rely at least on this. You have to contend with a ball joint. We're just going to pop that off. We're going to replace it then with the head sculpt that I prefer at least going to pop that in place and now you've got jubilee again blowing a bubble and that's going to work quite well with my planned display to have her standing alongside wolverine 
Uh, for the rest of the figure's body, again, what we get here in this case is we've got the darker shadowing here happening to the body. Now, again, we did get this with Wolverine. Let's just reach the side. I had Wolverine here just off to the side here. Let's bring him in so you can kind of see as well that they did add some additional shadowing here on Wolverine. Maybe it's not as much the extreme when it comes to the yellows. You can see it a lot more, I think, with Jubilee. You see a lot more of it, though, I think, when it came to Wolverine's trunks, for example, the dark shadowing there to the side. Jubilee also has it as well, but it seems to stand out just a little bit more. She got the pink, pink top underneath, of course, over top of that, a soft goods, soft plastic trench coat that sits over top of the figure's body. There really isn't a way, I suppose, to remove this. Even if you could, you would then just be leaving behind, of course, the sleeves from the trench coat anyways. One thing I did want to say, though, about the trench coat, it does look really nice, and I like the way they've added the darker yellow. It, it's not too stark of a darker color either. And while it sort of just stops abruptly here, I do like the, the idea that they actually did incorporate that to the figure's body. One thing I did notice, though, about Jubilee, and it comes more to her joints. We're going to talk more about the joints, I suppose, when we get down to the articulation of the figure. But you'll notice, for example, that the joints that they use for the elbow isn't quite the same color that they've used for the forearm. It's close enough and far enough away, you probably wouldn't even notice it either. I noticed also as well that her neck is a little bit of a lighter color than it is for the face. Let's get her head all the way in there because I don't think I had it all the way down onto the ball joint. So there are a few little areas where the color isn't as seamless as I would like. Certainly more, I think, in the elbow joint than in the neck joint, for example. But overall, it's, again, a great-looking figure. Darker colors represented down below here. We've got the, more of the primary blues with the darker purple added there to the sides of her legs. Speaking of her legs, she's got, again, because she's wearing shorts, she's got bare legs here. The knees, I think, work a lot better by continuing the same color scheme as the thigh and then the calf below it. Unlike the elbows, where maybe there is a little bit of off coloring that they use for the joint. It's not the case at all when it comes to the knees. And again, you've got the boots down below there as well. She doesn't have peg holes, obviously, simply because the figure in this case is going to be using a display stand. But overall, again, a nice, nice looking jubilee. For the figure's articulation, we're going to stick with this one for right now. The head is on a ball joint, so you can rotate it all the way around. I still feel like I don't have the head all the way on there. Yeah, you're going to have to put a little bit more pressure into that. Head does look up, the head does look down, and it does also rock back and forth to varying degrees. And that would be consistent as well, whether you decide to use this head sculpt, or I think my next favorite is this one right here. I'm kind of kind of torn as to which one I would display on the on my shelf. I'm probably going to stick with this one for right now. Maybe I might just find, find myself jumping back to this one at a later date. Anyways, though, for the upper torso on Jubilee, it is on a ball joint, despite for the fact that she does have a trench coat. doesn't seem to limit at all the articulation for the figure. And then she does also have a secondary ball joint at the base of the abdomen. So you can move that up and down as well. You can also rock it back and forth. For the, sh the shoulders, this is the only thing that's a little more limited on Jubilee, and you do feel like you're fighting it the whole way. You can, in theory, rotate the arm all the way around, but it's really tight. As well, it was very tight, too, to bring the arms out. And I would only bring them out, I would say, just below 90 degrees. That's as far as I can really get it before anything after that seemed to be really reluctant. So I'm just going to probably leave it right there. Figure does have a swivel, and it's actually just a swivel just below the rolled up sleeve. Figure only seems to have a single hinge in the elbow. Once again, like the joint isn't as close in color as I would like for the forearm, but still it's, 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 it's there, obviously, but far enough away you're not going to notice it. The hands are not some, something separate. So like, for example, the glove can't rotate from the rest of the form, but at least you can rotate the hands all the way around. You hinge them as well, back and forth as well. One of the best, still one of the best and easiest hands I've ever had to change on a six scale figure. I hope they keep that consistent when it comes to future X-Men figures. When it comes to legs, the legs, once again, are more of a slightly noisier ball joints. You can probably hear them as I'm, as I'm bringing them out. That's as far of a split as you can get for Jubilee. You can bring the legs forward. You can bring the legs back. The lower half of her body is a softer plastic, but not super soft that I feel it's going to be leaving behind like warpness if you start to bring the legs out too, too much, too frequently forward. The figure does have a swivel at the top of the thigh. The figure also possesses a double hinge on the knee. She does have no articulation here for the lower calf or where the boot starts, but she has at least articulation here where it counts in the ankle. You can only move it up and down only by just a little bit, but she does have quite a lot of an ankle rocker. All in all, it's a great looking figure. There are a few things that I probably would have just done away with altogether. I, th I think the biggest one for me is, honestly, when it comes to displaying this figure, I can't see myself ever really wanting to display her with these. I think they're fun, and I'm sure at some point, if I saw an episode again of the original 90s X-Men cartoon, I probably would have seen sometime her using an effect that looks similar to this. So I can't fault necessarily a Mondo for including an accessory as large and as complicated as this. I just think it's a little too big, and the way that they've also sculpted the hand, you always have to have the hands up in order to have this look more 
convincing. I, I for much ra rather instead, I think I would rather display her with, say, for example, this effect. And while the effect is very more obvious on the back, the way they attached it to the hand, if you have it displayed like that, it's not going to look bad at all. Figure has lots of accessories. The figure has lots of heads, especially if you decide to go the route of, say, for example, the limited edition re release, which we just happen to again look at in this review. There's lots of choices to choose from when it comes to Jubilation Lee. Nice looking figure, though. It's going to go quite well with the already awesome Wolverine that we got from Mondo in, at an earlier time. And they have also planned to release a Magneto. And I think even in the read-up of Jubilee, they mentioned that this is the third figure, but I think she's the second figure that got released, and maybe Magneto hasn't yet arrived. Either way, though, if you are a fan of the original 90s X-Men cartoon and you were a big fan of Jubilee, it's a great figure to be picking up, especially already if you have already picked up the Wolverine in the past. So as of right now, Jubilee is over on Mondo's website with a pre-order release date of June 2023. The limited edition release that Mondo gave me the chance to have a look at in this review is actually going for $205 over again on their website. Or what you can also do as well is you can get on board the four interest-free payment plan of $51.25 each month until, of course, Jubilee is paid off and she gets shipped to your door. For those that have already got the chance to get the six-scale version of Wolverine from the X-Men animated series, you already know the stuff that Mondo's doing when it comes to these animated series figures. Tall, overscaled, well, six scale fig figures, tons of articulation, tons of details, and looking like they were pulled from the actual screen of the original cartoon series. The thing I really like about Jubilee, and to be fair, really, something that they did so well also with Wolverine is that they throw a ton of things at this one. So, you, for example, you get already three interchangeable heads, not counting the one that already was on the next socket of the figure. But then if you get the chance to get the limited edition release, you then on top of it have two additional head sculpts to work with, along with Jubilee's fairy tale theater. So if that's a figure head sculpt that you always wanted to get for your figure... It's also available here with the limited edition release as well. She gets, of course, the chili fries. She gets the, in this case, I did get the Slurpee cup into her hand. And I've got the little glimmer sparkle finger that I've got displayed on the other hand. Speaking of hands, I know I've already talked a lot about this in the review. But these hands were so easy to change. Literally, until you actually get this figure in your hands yourself, you won't have any chance to really be able to experience how easy it is to change the hands out. I don't know whether they're just changing the materials using a softer rubber material or just the fact that they're using a square peg seems to make one of the easiest, one, what would normally have been a chore to change the hands up for a six scale figure became a breeze when it came to changing the hands for Jubilee here. Now, all the figure does come included with, I honestly think if you only are looking to get either the standard release or the limited edition release, unless you're really interested to get the skateboard, for example, or the one, the head sculpt from Jubilee's fairy tale theater, I think, honestly, you're getting enough stuff really with the standard release. The things that I would want to be displaying with the figure, in my own personal opinion, would all be the things that go with the standard release. But if you want to get all the extra additional bells and whistles, go again the limited edition release, which again is going to be $205 over on their website. What do you guys think of Jubilee? Let me know down below in the comment section. Could you guys see yourselves picking this one up? And have you already had the chance to pick up the six scale release of Wolverine? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Once again, a big, big thank you to the folks over at Mondo that did provide this sample of the brand new X-Men, the animated series, Jubilee. And we can have a look in this review. Speaking of reviews, if you guys enjoyed the one that you just finished watching, why not throw it a like? But if you guys are loving, loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly on board to see more, then make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and that you're also turning on the bell notification. Got a little bit of time on your hands? You want to check out some more stuff from Mondo? Popping up also at the very end of this video will also be a playlist of other things I've looked at for Mondo over the years with many more to follow. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.